Welcome to my course uh, Electrochemical Energy Storage and this is module number 3 where we are talking about lithium batteries. This is lecture number 12 where I will introduce certain operational mechanism for lithium ion batteries uh, including the intercalation materials, alloys, direct conversion material and also electrolyte. So, we will uh, concept first uh, the anode electrolyte cathode, the requirement this is a recap already we have uh, described it. So, just to remind you once again and uh, then there are certain phenomena which uh, I am talking about. I was talking about the um, ACI layer formation particularly at the negative electrode uh, material. So, what is uh, the genesis of this kind of uh, secondary electrolyte interface layer? So, that I will explain. Lithium alloys as substitute of lithium metal alloys uh, that uh, we have talked about. Then we also talked about the free energy composition diagram uh, and from free energy composition diagram. Uh, we uh, extracted the voltage profile, lithium carbon alloys we will talk about. Then we will also talk about the intercalation material um, and why certain intercalation material is easy to make and certain intercalation material is very difficult to make in, uh, in, in case of uh, lithium uh, manganese oxide for example. So, we will introduce the crystal field theory. Uh, the basic component which is uh, uh, which will help you to understand this phenomena better. Then we will talk about in spinel cathode material the yarn teller distortion uh, which is detrimental for the cyclability of this material and finally polyanion type of cathode material will be described. So again uh, you are familiar now with this diagram. So, the chemical potential of cathode and chemical potential of anode that should lie in between the highest occupied molecular orbital which is HOMO and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital which is LUMO. Uh, so, this band gap, uh, this band gap, uh, these two should be in between these two. So, in real cell as you can see that instead of this uh, that uh, the Fermi energy uh, <coughs> for the cathode uh, it should always lie a little bit above from the HOMO and the Fermi energy for anode it should lie a little bit uh, below of the LUMO. Uh, it is slightly different as you can see that this is uh, lower than HOMO and uh, this uh, uh, Fermi level is uh, slightly upper than LUMO. So, during operation uh, if uh, this uh, chemical potential of uh, lithium in cathode and uh, lithium in anode are like this, then the electrolyte is oxidized on cathode. So, electrolyte will get oxidized here, so it will leave electron and uh, it will uh, reduce on the anode surface uh, because of this kind of uh, positioning of the uh, Fermi energy level and uh, relative positioning of Fermi energy level in HOMO and uh, with respect to HOMO and LUMO bond. So, if I take uh, a simple example of uh, uh, a um, half cell lithium half cell uh, with gold electrode and uh, it is having an electrolyte uh, 1 molar of lithium chloride in uh, uh, polycarbonate. So, this electrolyte if we consider then you can see um, uh, at different level of lithium voltage if you go lower than 0 volt then there is a possibility of lithium deposition. Then slightly above that again at lower potential limit if you uh, go to really low in half cell configuration then lithium and gold alloy will form 
then um, the slightly above voltage here uh, uh, the lithium upd uh, this is this this will form um, and then water reduction will also take place then uh, gold hydroxide reduction will take place along with this type of voltage and uh, this is due to oxygen reduction. So, several reaction will take place for this uh, simple uh, cell and uh, in the anodic reaction uh, also we will have uh, uh, lithium bulk dissolution whatever was deposited um, that will get dissolved into the electrolyte back lithium gold alloy decomposition reaction will take place. Then lithium um, uh, this under potential deposition that stripping will occur at slightly higher voltage than this. Uh, then um, gold hydroxide uh, uh, reduction was here, so it will form and finally at relatively higher voltage the polycarbonate oxidation will take place. So, lot of electrochemical uh, phenomena will take place um, uh, in general and uh, when uh, we are talking about uh, a voltage uh, range of 0 to 5 volt, uh, then the oxide formation or solvent oxidation that is usually in the higher voltage regime, higher voltage window and lithium deposition, lithium metal alloy formation solvent reduction and secondary electrolyte interface layer formation and also in case of aqueous electrolyte uh, the water decomposition all will uh, take place uh, near 0 volt regime. So, while you select the voltage in window one should be uh, quite cautious about uh, particularly the presence of uh, uh, water and oxygen uh, reduction and oxidation. Uh, so, that uh, should be avoided and that can be arrested by drying the electrolyte. So, electrolyte particularly uh, which are used for lithium ion battery the organic type electrolyte they should be uh, uh, dry um, there should not be any moisture present. So, usually all this uh, experiment it is better to do in a dry room with a very low level of relative humidity or in laboratory experiment usually we use a uh, globe box uh, so that the detrimental effect of uh, water and oxygen reduction and oxidation that can be arrested. So, that uh, one should keep it in mind. Now, uh, the ECI layer we are talking about. So, what is this uh, importance and what are the characteristics of this ECI? So, let us take the example of lithium. Uh, so, the decomposition of organic electrolyte at the negative electrode this is uh, a major concern and that is something to do uh, with the uh, relative position of the Fermi level of the anode and the uh, homo band for the electrolyte as I have explained. And it is uh, having a major concern um, uh, and there is in fact no electrolyte with uh, enough reductive, reductive stability to withstand the metallic lithium uh, and alloy anodes. So, if you go to lower voltage this problem is always there. So, secondary electrolyte interface is uh, basically extremely important for the operation of such anode particularly lithium metal and uh, metal alloy. Uh, and they eventually uh, first produce a protective layer. Uh, as you can see the first uh, uh, there are lot of uh, uh, material that is generating um, inside the electrolyte and uh, lithium is exposed to that. So, initially uh, it forms a uh, surface film like this and also the metallic lithium uh, this is undulated. Uh, that you can see. So, a protective layer forms on top of that uh, and it is fortunately this is also lithium conducting, but electrically insulating. So, lithium intercalation um, I should not say intercalation lithium uh, electroplating should not be 
uh, actually a problem because of the formation of this surface film. So, without a good ACI, uh, this anode will never work because somehow you will have to stop this otherwise your lithium will all get exhausted. So, this lithium this surface layer formation in one way it is good otherwise this uh, lithium anode will never work. So, research is ongoing in this field to develop the electrolytes providing a good quality of this surface uh, electrolyte interface on the anode surface which uh, eventually is having a good ionic conductivity and also having a good uh, mechanical strength because if it is punctured somewhere then again it will expose the lithium and again uh, this kind of surface layer will form. So, more surface layer will form. So, uh, that is why their mechanical strength should also be high and it should have good mechanical uh, along with mechanical strength good ionic conductivity to uh, just uh, withstand the rupture. Uh, due to the formation of the dendrite. So, eventually what will happen this lithium formation uh, on top of this uh, surface layer it will form uh, a dendrite. So, if the mechanical stability of the film is not that great then it will puncture it and it will start to grow and it will lead to internal short circuiting. Now, here is uh, uh, some example. Um, of the formation of various types of uh, this uh, um, alkali carbonate solvent if you using uh, on lithium. Uh, so, this uh, type of polycarbonate um, they reacts with lithium to form this PCLI this kind of compound and also uh, this is basically uh, uh, get uh, deposited. Uh, so, this type of organic uh, compound can form as a part of uh, uh, your uh, ACI layer. Uh, from the lithium salt, uh, uh, it forms uh, carbonate which is also precipitate uh, on top of uh, the electrode material and uh, the chlorate salt this also lithium oxide is precipitate. So, there is very little uh, evidence of the formation of a cathode interface uh, layer um, since they are traditionally soluble. So, they do not deposit on top of the surface, but they are soluble in the electrolyte. Usually alkali carbonates they have much higher anodic stability than uh, ethers that also we will describe uh, later. The order of anodic stability uh, in common salts is uh, uh, arsenic, uh, then uh, LiBF4, then LiPF6, they are all larger as compared to the chlorate and this salts. So, usually commercial battery they use this type of salt. And acetonitrile is one of the polar aprotic solvent uh, of highest anodic stability. So, the salts are dissolved in it and salt type and solvent type affect the ionic conductivity as you can see here there are several uh, examples we have shown and uh, the ionic conductivity they depend on the salt and solvent combination. So, that uh, you should uh, keep it in mind while selecting the particular um, organic electrolyte. Now, uh, you know that lithium alloys that I have explained that uh, it can be a substitute for lithium metal anodes because lithium metal has a problem of formation of this dendrite structure. So, in order to create the anode uh, which are compatible to the electrolyte system alloys of lithium uh, they are considered as a potential replacement. So, the idea was to create lithium in its metallic state but its activity is reduced due to the formation of the alloy. So, there are several system lithium silicon, lithium alloy, lithium aluminum alloy uh, they are uh, significantly uh, they are they are being studied and of interest. So, in the earlier lecture we described that the cell potential and capacity are composition dependent parameters. 
So, the theoretical basis for understanding and predicting the potential and capacity of bi binary as well as ternary alloys under equilibrium as well as non equilibrium conditions uh, take us to the thermodynamics of condensed phase. So, phase diagram is the best thing uh, to determine such property and this is the generic phase diagram. If you are not familiar with the phase diagram, then uh, you will have to study it separately from standard textbook. So, in short uh, you can see that uh, pure metal A and metal B, uh, they can form various types of phases. So, they can form a solid solution alpha where uh, A content is more as compared to B because B is increasing in this direction. Then apart from that uh, you have uh, the formation of a gamma phase, uh, formation of liquid phase. So, the composition of each of this phase, uh, the liquid composition and the solid solution composition you can apply the lever rule to know the composition. So, uh, the knowledge basic knowledge of phase diagram is absolutely uh, important to understand this concept. So, if we assume that the alloys in an electrochemical cell operates in a fixed temperature, I have shown the fixed temperature is in the blue line, then there are presence of several single phase as well as mixture of phase. For example, alpha is there, alpha plus beta is there, then a line compound beta is there, then beta plus gamma, then gamma solid solution, so they are there. So, you know the Gibbs phase rule tells us the degree of freedom that depends on the component, number of component, number of phase and this two terms, this plus 2 is coming because of temperature and pressure. Now, this is a familiar diagram already I uh, talked about it. Um, if you consider a ideal solution of lithium that is homogeneously dispersed in, uh, in, in, in the alloy. Uh, uh, distributed in the alloy just like this. So, this is uh, just uh, somewhere here uh, a single phase solid solution. Then I can write the free energy of mixing X and lithium into 1 mole of this solution. So, that is equal to free energy after mixing minus free energy before mixing. So, that is the uh, difference in free energy of mixing. So, that is given by x x uh, the molar fraction, then the free energy of x and uh, free energy of x at standard condition for alpha phase and this is for the lithium the other one. So, this is lithium and lithium uh, standard uh, case for the alpha phase. right? So, this I can replace it with the chemical potential and then uh, put the value of the chemical potential which is uh, R T L N A I. So, you can derive this relation. So, the concentration part for an ideal solution the activity uh, is nothing but um, x the molar fraction. So, this already I have described while well, I was talking about the chemical potential. So, you can understand it better I am not repeating it um, uh, elaborately. So, your free energy of mixing is given by this relation which is shown in the figure. So, which is related with the mole fraction of the x component uh, and the mole fraction of lithium component uh, that is in the mixture. So, the chemical potential of uh, X and lithium in phase can be obtained by uh, the method of tangential intercept. So, for this particular composition if you want to know the chemical potential of lithium then you just draw a tangent here and you get the uh, chemical potential of lithium here and chemical potential of X component here. Similarly, for other compositions also you can have. Uh, you can have this uh, uh, measured. So, here you see the lithium potential is increasing here and uh, for this composition uh, this will be decreasing uh, for x. 
So, this is for the single phase solid solution. For multi phase uh, like this, uh, a common tangent you can draw here. So, this common tangent uh, between which the mixture of two phase possesses the minimum uh, gives free energy. So, in the last slide, you see that this is a phase mixture. Uh, and here the um, free energy minimum uh, is same uh, along with the tangent. So, uh, here also you can identify the chemical potentials. So, I have elaborated it for this uh, hypothetical phase diagram. If you can take uh, this temperature which is the high temperature regime, you have the alpha phase then a mixture of alpha phase and uh, the liquid and then you have pure liquid phase. So, corresponding composition versus composition diagram uh, here in this case it is lithium uh, increasing in this side. Uh, this can be given by this type of relation because it is a two phase mixture. When you come down to the lower temperature then uh, again there is a phase mixture and there are several phase. So, you can have alpha phase, you can have beta phase and you can have the gamma phase. So, likewise uh, you can also draw the uh, free energy change versus lithium ion composition diagram the way it is shown here. So, if you consider uh, the lithium and uh, antimony alloy formation. So, I will go by this phase diagram of lithium and antimony and there are several phase that uh, is formed when uh, lithium is forming an alloy with antimony. So, if you take the example between lithium 0 which is somewhere here pure antimony and uh, lithium where it is 0.66 then the phase uh, that is forming is uh, Li 2 Sb. And again in this composition of lithium 0 0.66 to 0 0.75, you have this phase uh, that is forming this Li 2 Sb as well as Li 3 Sb in this composition range. And when uh, lithium is beyond 0 0.75, then you have a mixture of pure lithium and Li 3 Sb. So, in pure antimony when you alloy it with lithium, there is a nucleation of uh, this uh, speck of uh, Li 2 Sb that nucleates with the uh, antimony grain boundaries and this actually this speck grows as further lithium is inserted in parallel to Li 2 Sb grains they start to nucleate as more and more lithium is added then Li 2 Sb that domains increases until there is no more antimony left at x equal to 0.66 and this process is known as nucleation and growth process for this alloy formation. So, uh, you can choose any of this alloy composition and uh, uh, start using it for your uh, for your anode material. Similarly, a triaxial phase diagram uh, can be constructed explicitly I uh, will not be able to talk on this triaxial phase diagram, but in my non-metallic uh, material course uh, the phase diagram I have elaborated lectures. So, I will um, recommend all of you to go through those lecture to understand the triaxial uh, phase diagram and as you can see there are many many phase that uh, basically can form. And when lithium gets uh, alloyed with a phase of mixture of tin and cadmium, both forms binary alloy uh, with lithium. Several equilibrium phase mixture are formed according to this triaxial phase diagram. So, the equilibrium phase present at different lithium contents that is decided by the vertices of the respective smaller triangle. So, you can actually uh, uh, you, you are welcome to uh, figure out which phases uh, will form first when lithium is alloyed along with the relative bed fraction of the other phases. So, you can look at the vertices of this triangle 
and uh, you can construct appropriate line and apply lever rule uh, to get the relative weight fraction. This may look like little bit complicated at this stage, uh, but uh, I sincerely hope that you will uh, try to read the triaxial phase diagram from the book by Tilly and my earlier lectures where it has been very well described including a certain illustrative example to know the relative phase fraction for a triaxial phase diagram. Now, in case of graphite that is another type of carbonaceous material that we are using basically there is a step wise arrangement of lithium between the so called graphene layer. So, each of single layer of graphite is graphene and uh, uh, this is formed uh, by uh, this number s which is equal to the number of graphene layers between two nearest guest layer here the guest layer is lithium. So, the process starts with uh, a stage of s equal to 4 or higher and this is followed by an equilibrium between s equal to 4 and then s equal to 3 s 3 as more and more lithium intercalated then finally, uh, other stage like s 2 and s 1 that is also present. So, um, lithium basically intercalates uh, like this. So, maximum lithium content of one lithium guest is per 6 carbon atom as a host and it is a highly ordered highly crystalline graphite ambient uh, uh, graphite under ambient pressure. So, the stacking uh, is uh, shifted to a kind of uh, arrangement. The intercalation reaction proceeds via the prismatic surface. Uh, through through the basal plane it is possible only via defect. So, the basal plane this thing is only by defect lithium can intercalate. Due to lithium layers the interlayer distance between graphene layer increases because lithium is going inside this layer as high as 10.3 percent and the lithium distribution is such that the occupation of the nearest neighbor is avoided. So, in case of uh, positive electrode material uh, Li MO2, uh, M is uh, cobalt, nickel, manganese, iron etcetera. So, lithium cobalt oxide is uh, one of the first material to be used for positive electrode in lithium and batteries. So, initially it crystallizes into a trigonal system with alternate LiO6 and uh, cobalt O6 octahedral layer. The oxygen stacking in lithium cobalt oxide this is having a ABC ABC kind of cubic structure and which is actually called this O3 type of structure. During charging lithium moves out of this layer causing several other types of phase transition because of this. Uh, cobalt coming out. So, during delithiation the lithium ions are initially extracted from their layers in the O3 phase at around uh, typically 0 0.45 uh, 1 minus x is 0 0.45 1 is the full lithium content. Then a new phase a P3 which is shown here that starts to form which basically coexist with O3 phase. So, this phase is formed by a sliding mechanism where oxygen stacking changes from this cubic uh, structure ABC ABC to AA BB CC type. So, that is shown here in this diagram. So, it has a prismatic coordination instead of a octahedral coordination. Now, this P3 phase is metastable. So, it slowly converts to a O1 phase. So, in O1 phase uh, lithium is again octahedrally coordinated as in this case and this is actually the O1 phase is having a stacking of hexagonal AB AB type. So, once lithium is coming out from the structure of lithium cobalt oxide 
then there are several type of phase transition that takes place some of them is having volumetric expansion or sometimes the crystal structure is slightly rotated to form a different types of phase. Now, I will uh, talk a little bit about the basic crystal field theory. Uh, in tetrahedral and uh, octahedral environment, the 5 d orbitals on a transition metal atom, they basically split into a T 2 g level having lower energy and a E g level that is of higher energy. In tetrahedral, this is just the reverse 5 d orbitals in a transition metal atom which is sitting inside this tetrahedral arrangement, this splits into T 2 g and E g. So, this is shown here. Now, this energy uh, is total is uh, uh, 10 d q in both the cases. Now, I can define two parameter one is uh, this delta, uh, it is the increased energy to place an electron in an E g orbital and P is the pairing energy. So, I will call this d cation, it is in low spin state when this del delta term is more than pairing. So, pairing will not be done, but it will actually go to the increased energy. So, if you consider here there are 7 uh, uh, electron spin, um, this is D 7 kind of configuration. So, here uh, since this energy is uh, more than pairing energy, so it will prefer to pair. So, it will first try to pair, pair and then it will go to the higher energy state. And in case of high spin, this pairing energy is more as compared to this delta. So, here what, what will happen? This will actually first fill this orbital and then it will start to have the pairing. So, in octahedral the low spin and tetrahedral the high spin that is preferred. And as I said the total delta value is 10 d q from the from this. So, 4 d q is equivalent to 2 by 5 delta and 6 d q is equivalent to 3 by 5 delta. So, this is a basic crystal field theory. Now, let us consider the tetrahedral versus octahedral coordination, we can actually estimate the crystal field stabilization energy and listen it carefully. Most transition metal ions prefer octahedral or distorted octahedral coordination because of their large crystal field stabilization energy in the octahedral site. This can be actually estimated. So, in octahedral coordination, each of this T 2 g electron experiences a stabilization of minus 4 by 10 into delta octahedral and each E g it experiences a destabilization of plus 6 by 10 into delta octahedral. This is from the earlier picture whichever I have drawn right. So, this is 4 d q and this is 6 d q. So, this one is total 10. So, accordingly one can do this calculation. So, if you now consider a chromium plus 3. 3 d electron has a crystal field stabilization energy is 3. So, this will be minus into 3 point sorry 3 into 4 by 10 delta octahedral plus point 0 into 6. This is not point, point 0 0.06, this is 0 into 6 because there is no electron here. So, total energy is 1.2 delta octahedral and uh, this is uh, the value is 10. So, it is minus 12 d q as delta is equal to 10 d q. Now, if you do the same in tetrahedral coordination, each E g electron it has a stabilization energy of minus 6 by 10 into del tetra and each T 2 g has a destabilization energy 
plus 4 by 10 into del t tetrahedra from this diagram for plus 3 d 3 plus. So, in tetrahedral coordination this is having a high spin configuration. So, chromium 3 plus would have a crystal field stabilization energy of minus 8 d q. So, from theoretical consideration of orbital orientation of C CFSE, this tetrahedral configuration must be multiplied by a factor of 0 0.44. Hence, the crystal field stabilization energy is minus 3.5 d q. So, the octahedral field stabilization energy is therefore, minus 12 d q minus of minus 3.52 d q. So, that means, it is minus 8.48 d q. So, more accurate value one can get by spectroscopically as you can see in the next table. So, I have done it for a variety of cations d 2, d 3, d 4, d 5, d 6, d 7. So, as you can see that for cobalt ion this octahedral field stabilization energy I can calculate from the crystal field stabilization energy in octahedral coordination and crystal field stabilization energy after multiplication with 0.44 in tetrahedral coordination in the same way what I have been illustrated in the last uh, slide. And then finally, this minus this gives me this value. Now, look at the values of manganese which is much smaller, iron is 0 in that respect which is d 5 and chromium already I have calculated, vanadium is minus 2.67 and nickel is minus 12.67. So, that tells me that the octahedral site stability of cobalt 3 ion cobalt plus 3 cation which is that which is there in lithium cobalt oxide it is the highest among cobalt nickel and manganese. So, cation migration to lithium site is least expected for cobalt 3 plus via tetrahedral site. So, therefore, lithium cobalt oxide is the highest stable oxide that cobalt from the transition metal site it will never come to the lithium site to block its passage because lithium is coming out and going in. So, if the transition metal cation due to this factor they comes in between that will uh, retard its movement. So, lithium manganese oxide it is least stable layered oxide amongst other. So, it is very difficult to make lithium meta lithium manganese oxide uh, to make a rechargeable battery and lithium nickel oxide is also equally uh, difficult because of this cation mixing and therefore, the first material that good enough who got the Nobel prize for this uh, considered is lithium cobalt oxide. So, uh, this is uh, one thing which is quite important and uh, uh, lithium uh, metal oxide phases like metal is cobalt, nickel, manganese, iron etcetera. So, as I told that other layered variant like nickel oxide and manganese oxide are difficult to synthesize due to the mixing of the transition metal cation. This is best understood by the consideration of the octahedral state stabilization energy from crystal field theory. And uh, this is again I have shown the same thing uh, for this type of structure. And uh, uh, we will also talk about uh, the splitting of the ligand and in the weak field this uh, um, anion um, uh, that they varies like this uh, in case of the ligand following the similar kind of uh, explanation. So, lithium cobalt oxide is most stable layer structured, lithium nickel oxide is capable of providing a larger extent of lithium extraction which cobalt oxide does not give and lithium manganese oxide is most unstable 
for the three layered structure, but it has a good working potential range in terms of safety. So, each of this having um, their plus point and negative point. So, this three solution, solid solution one can uh, make a certain composition. So, you can see lithium cobalt oxide, you can see lithium manganese oxide, you can see lithium nickel oxide and uh, there are several in between composition and as you move here it is a high stability zone. So, several composition like nickel, cobalt, manganese, one third, one third, one third or this composition or this composition or this composition, uh, they have been tried along with lithium nickel manganese oxide, lithium nickel cobalt oxide is also tried. So, in other words we try to uh, mix it and form a solid solution where the high rate or high capacity or safety they are least compromised to have a reasonably good commercial cathode materials. So, this is very interesting field of study. So, alternative structure for this manganese is uh, the spinel compound already I have described it. So, during charge you can see that all lithium you can take out it is unlike lithium cobalt oxide where only 0.5 mole you can take it out otherwise this layer structure will collapse. For lithium nickel oxide and lithium manganese oxide it has a problem of cation mixing and which can be well established by the calculation of octahedral state stabilization energy. So, the lithium extraction at 4 volt region uh, for this type of material. Uh, they occur uh, uh, by a one phase reaction and two phase reaction. This I will uh, come back again when we will talk about the case studies. So, during charging uh, you have two plateau although there is no crystal structure change, but there is a slight modification in it. So, this two phase reaction with dilithiated phase results in a more stable defect spinel which may cause a structural failure because there is a change in the volume expansion because of this slight crystal structure change. But when once you go to lower voltage potential then there is a problem of lithium insertion into this structure. So, further lithium you can insert here. So, that will eventually increase its capacity. So, that leads to a cubic to tetragonal transformation and that is due to the so called yarn teller distortion. So, higher manganese 3 plus content that also results the migration of lithium site due to its lower octahedral uh, state stabilization energy. So, during the working of lithium manganese oxide in the 3 volt region uh, which rarely one does as I told that more lithium will be inserted. So, the manganese in lithium manganese oxide uh, they gets reduced to Mn 3 plus in this reaction. So, again we will go back to the electronic configuration of Mn 4 plus uh, with high spin state. So, this is T g 3 T 2 g 3 and E z 0 which will not result any distortion of the octahedral and maintain the cubic stability. But if it is transformed into Mn3 plus because of this lithium insertion, then electronic configuration will change T2G3 and EG1, again high spin configuration. So, that will elongate the octahedron along the z axis and shrink the xy axis. A further split occurs in the EG and T2G orbital which eventually reduces the energy of the system. So, in a nutshell Mn 4 plus on reduction to Mn 3 plus that undergoes a cubic to tetragonal distortion in the octahedral shape and that is detrimental for the cyclability of this type of cathode. In case of polyanion based cathode material like lithium iron phosphate it adopts a oxygen hexagonal packing into which lithium and iron occupies half of the octahedral site and this P occupies one eighth of the tetrahedral site. 
this is a peculiar arrangement of lithium and iron 2 plus that results eventually um, as shown in this figure. So, Li O6 octahedron shear edge as uh, chain along uh, this will be 0 1 0 direction and this results the lithium extraction and insertion along a single line which is 0 1 0. So, in contrast to the oxide cathode which can be synthesized in ambient air, this polyanion uh, material needs to be synthesized in argon atmosphere or inert atmosphere due to the presence of this PO4 group and prevent oxidation from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. So, this operates uh, lithium iron phosphate operates via solid solution mechanism similar to alloys but it has a peculiar behavior with the heat of mixing. So, you can see that uh, the result free energy composition diagram is not really uh, the way I have shown it or uh, I have asked you to derive like this, but it is showing two minima. The implication uh, of it in the voltage profile that we will discuss later. So, this is uh, an important physical uh, concepts which is pertinent to lithium ion battery. You listen to this lecture repeatedly and try to follow my slides along with uh, this literatures. So, these two uh, published paper they are very important and uh, I ask you to read at as study material uh, uh, this one and this one. And uh, the book by Air West. Uh, that tells about this uh, bonding behavior, this T 2 G and E G splitting, which also needs to be read for proper grasping the material taught in this class. So, several important physical concepts uh, pertinent to the operation of lithium and rechargeable cells I have illustrated. Anode, electrolyte, cathode very important for functioning of lithium ion cell basis of secondary electrolyte interface formation as a negative electrode we have illustrated. Lithium alloys and they are substitute of lithium metal, both they have not commercialized yet. Free energy and composition diagram in fact, you can work out and you can prepare this kind of diagram. Layered cathode and cation disorder that has been explained in terms of crystal field theory high spin and low spin criteria and crystal field stabilization energy and octahedral state stabilization energy. They are worked out and you need to practice these calculations. Spinel cathode and uh, its uh, relation with yarn teller distortion has been explained and finally, polyanion based cathode material uh, we have illustrated. Thank you for your attention.